Thank you. 
Next up, I'm going to be, and again, we call that a home day. That month, it's that time of year, it's that month. Uh, make sure y'all know, we're going to come here, we're going to come over back around, because we got to get by this new one, too. We all will recognize our graduates, because you can excel seriously, uh, fiercely, and academically, and professionally. Uh, God, 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 and even when you say it, play, it's when you say play, it's good. And that's why we want everybody to play, because some of y'all can't play it's good. Thank you. 
Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's my focus. Wonderful picture.
Reggie Parker, and then we'll go on with our right back on track. I mean, yeah. you know what? Because yeah. I will not be able to. You can come. just bring it down. You want to stand out there? Yeah, I can. Just as long as it's out there. You get both of them? Yeah, right here. Yeah. It won't be too loud for you. Right here, right here. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. I thank the Lord for Mr. Bobby, Bobby Ladd inviting me, and um, and I just wanted to play a song, and it's an old song that everybody knows, and it's called "Jesus, You're the Center of My Joy," and uh, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I hope that your strength too. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you might get. Um, Sometimes you might get down and and out and, and stuff, but you know, the, but the joy of the Lord just keeps you going. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So I'm gonna play that song for y'all. <laughs>
gonna tell you like they used to say, aren't we having a time? We're having a time in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord, for this day. At this time, we're going to introduce to you some and present to others. Our assistant. I don't know if they call him Junior Pastor, but they call him more like one of the soldiers for Christ. Because he's in the army of the Lord. And key word, army. Amen. So at this time, we're going to introduce our own Pastor John. Amen. Give him a hand while he's coming. Amen. To guide you throughout the rest of the service. Amen. Technology. God is good. Alrighty. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Um, let's see here. Actually, just before we do that, <laughs> Haley, come on. <laughs> come on. It's all my baby. I'm sorry. I know we. <laughs> Um, before I sing this song, <laughs> um, I just want to ask y'all to bear with me because I have never sang this song in public, and th this is going to be the first time. <laughs> When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than able. 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 Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Now I see all that I had, and I've got my confidence back. I'll put my trust in the one who still does miracles. You do miracles. You are more than able. 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 Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? And can you imagine, with all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do? 
what the Lord can do. And it's going to happen. Just let them wait, make it through. It's going to move. And it's going to move. Can you imagine? With all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do. What the Lord can do. And it's going to happen. Just let the way make it through. It's going to move. And it's going to move. Can you imagine? With all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do. What the Lord can do. And it's going to happen. Just let the way make it through. And it's going to move. It's got to move. Can you imagine? With all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do, and it's gonna happen. Just let the way make it through, it's gonna move. You are more than able. And anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? You are more You are more than able. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. God is more than able. He is more than able. God, you're more than able. God, you're more than able. Who are we to deny what the Lord can do? Who are we to deny what the Lord can do? Who are we to deny what the Lord can do? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have the authority to deny what the Lord can do. <laughs> Who in here is big enough and bad enough to deny what the Lord can do? <laughs> we don't have the authority to deny what the Lord can do. Uh, is he more than able? Is he more than able? Is he more than able? Was he more than able on your last problem? On the last thing you struggled with? On the last thing you thought would stop you? On the last thing you thought would kill you? Was he more than able then? Are you still here? He's more than able. He was more than able then. He's more than able now. He'll be more than able whenever. There won't be a time when you'll look up and he won't be more than able. Your problems are not worthy to deny the Lord his glory. 
Your sickness is not able to deny the Lord his glory. My daughter asked, I told my daughter today, I said, I'm probably going to call you to sing. She said, Daddy, what do you want me to sing? And I thought about it the whole trip. I didn't know anything about anything going on today. The Lord kept me in the dark. I, I, I built a PowerPoint presentation last night. This morning, the Lord said, nope. So I got in the car and built another one on the way here. When I got about to Ardmore, he said, nope. I was like, and then I, I told my daughter, I said, I'm pretty sure you're going to be singing, not knowing what we were going to talk about. And, and, and she said, Daddy, well, what do you want me to sing? I said, well, give me a, a few minutes. I'll figure that out. And then uh, when we got about to more, I said, baby, you're going to have to figure it out. I don't know what you're going to sing. And then, <laughs> but I want you to tell you today that your problems are not worthy to take the glory from God. They're not, not only do they not stack up against our Father, they can't stack up. They can't stack up. Stop giving your problems glory and not giving our Heavenly Father glory. He's going to win. He's won before. He's going to win again. The same yesterday, today, and forever. That's our God. I deny. That's my favorite part. Of the, the, my favorite. I love that you are more than able. We hear that a lot. But who are we to deny it? You know what I'm saying? Like, who goes step up and deny God? I mean, with God with us, who can be against us? There is no problem plus God that doesn't make you the most protected person in the universe. Do y'all realize that? You're the most protected person in the universe. Because God is, regardless of your problem, regardless of the sickness that you might face, regardless of everything coming against you, regardless of crooked bosses, regardless of financial struggles, you're the most protected person in the universe. And there are people that are sitting around with stacks of money. They swim. They like Scrooge. Y'all remember Uncle Scrooge back in the day, the duck, Scrooge McDuck, he was jumping his, his, uh, his ocean of, of gold coins and swim around just to realize it, the basket as well. And there are people who have money just like that. And something's going to take them out like that because just like the chaff, life is, this life is like a vapor in the wind. Just like the chaff is going to be here today, gone tomorrow. But you, because you are a child of God, you are the most protected person in the whole universe. You're equally as protected as all the other children of God. Your heavenly father who holds everything in the palm of his hand. This, 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 this world is spinning at a thousand miles per hour. And we can drink hot coffee because God has it in his hand. Like, I mean, hot coffee shouldn't exist, guys. How many of y'all like a good coffee? Coffee exists because God holds the world in the palm of his hand. I mean, can you give God praise for coffee? Y'all love coffee. <laughs> it exists because God holds the world in his hand. And nothing will fail. Nothing will fail as, as long as he's holding it. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be holding it for a long time because can't nobody dethrone him. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure tomorrow he's going to be sitting on the same throne he's sitting on today. Yeah. Um, when we were about at uh, early more, maybe maybe about mid mid Norman, the Lord kind of gave me some instructions, as far as I can understand, on how today's discourse is going to go. So I do need everybody who has a Bible available, a King James Version Bible. So we're all in one accord. If you don't have a King James Version, you can read along. But we're going to be. Uh, we're actually going to be speaking uh, the, these verses together. And I'm so glad certain people showed up uh, because we needed all the voices. Um, but we're going to go to the 34th Psalm. The 34th Psalm. And this is how it's going to go. 
if you are a man or a boy, <laughs> if you can read and you're a boy, we are going to read the odd verses. And if you are a woman or a girl, we are going to read, you are going to read the even verses. We good? All righty. And uh, Pastor Bobby always used to talk about letting the word wash over your soul. Let the word wash over your soul. Let it rejuvenate you. Let it give you uh, confidence and renew your strength as we read these words. Um, so we're at verse one. I'm going to read a Psalm of David. Uh, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. And we're going to start from I will bless Fellas, we're going to read right now. I will bless at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. They looked at... Hey, hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name and ask God that you speak to our hearts, God. We want to hear from you. We want to grow. We want to be conformed to the image of your son. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I go to church where I don't have to wonder if people love the Lord. Like, like we don't, have, I don't have to sit over here and preach, love the Lord, love the Lord. I don't have to do that at this church. I don't have to, I mean, I'm going to say it every now and then just because I'm supposed to, you know what I'm saying? But, but I know when I look out, I'm looking at people who love the Lord. Uh, loving, the loving the Lord is not a, I, I don't view it as a weakness. Maybe I'm off, but I don't view it as a weakness here. Uh, we love the Lord around here. Um, so uh, I was going to talk to you about some things that um, this, like I said, this is kind of like the Lord kind of giving me this is uh, kind of just giving me what to do here. But I want to talk about some things that the Lord has brought my family through just a few of the things in the last 10 years or so. Um, and actually, I'm going to call my wife to talk about one of the one of the things uh, with our son. If y'all notice, those of you who are on Bible study on Thursday, uh, d does anybody uh, by chance remember for a 50 cent piece? 
I got a whole bunch of 50 cent pieces in the car for my little kids. But uh, for 50 cent pieces, anybody remember what my word was Thursday that reminded me of God's faithfulness? Sister Dolores? Nehemiah. So that's going to be uh, the part that DeAndre, I'm going to call you up and have you talk about a little bit of that one. But, uh, but God is so, so faithful. And, uh, and it's important that when we're dealing with whatever we're dealing with in life, uh, it's very important that we remember how faithful he's been. Like it's so easy to get captivated and distracted by our current problem. It's very, it's very simple to do. I do it. I, I know it's easy to do. Uh, some of y'all warriors, y'all like, I never that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but every now and then, our current problem just <clears throat> appears to be overwhelming. I want you to know who the real overwhelming one in the room is, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like because God is present with you. And he is going to overwhelm your problems in due season. All we have to do is be faithful and wait. Everybody say, be faithful. Be faithful. Everybody say, wait. If we're, if we're faithful and we're way in due season, God's going to overthrow and overcome our problems. And some of you have been around long enough or have been with Jesus long enough to see the overthrowing. You've seen him lift burdens off of you. Some of you feel like this psalmist described afflicted. Some of you came here and you felt like you had afflictions all over you. You're carrying the burden of afflictions. But what did this psalmist say? He said, he admitted that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but that's not where he left it. Where did he leave it, pastor? But the Lord delivers them from them all. So afflictions are a guarantee. It's a stamp. You cannot live holy. You're not going to live in this world. You're not going to be with Jesus. And not deal with persecution, not deal with affliction, not deal with some form of suffering at some point in time. You're going to deal with something. And if you haven't dealt with nothing, <laughs> you're, you're fortifying yourself right now. You're strengthening yourself right now. God has given you those spiritual muscles to, to, to hold on to his holy word, to his holy hand when your time comes. But you're going to deal with something. But God's promise is, and what God does is he's in the delivering business. We, we got to learn to be the faithful and waiting business because our God is in the delivering business. And um, I just want to talk about our children from Hannah down. I'm going to start with Hannah. And Hannah, we received a report um, and this was absolute science, guys. Y'all know what science, uh, science, scientists seem to know a lot these days. That, that was kind of a poke, but, but, uh, but I saw the x-rays. I saw all the x-rays of my baby Hannah's when they told us that she'd never walk. And her hips, her hips, were not formed. She had no ball joint. She had no, uh, doctor, I'm sorry. The thing that holds the, anyway, she know what I'm talking about. The, the ball and socket. Socket and ball or whatever. I'm, I'm messing it up. But they know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she had, those, th those, those uh, were just not formed. Like they didn't, they, like I saw the x-ray myself. They weren't there. And the doctor says she, she'll never walk. Start preparing. And it's weird because during that time, we randomly, randomly, I told my wife, we were driving through Fort Worth. Fort Worth's a pretty big city. I said, turn there. She turned down a street. She went a little further. I said, turn right here. She turned down another street. I said, turn here. We, we randomly went in a church in the middle of a neighborhood. It was in the middle, kind of like this one. It was in the middle of, an, but I mean, it was like, in the middle of the neighborhood. Like, this is at least like one street off from the main street. It was in the middle of the neighborhood. We randomly went to this church, and I said, we're supposed to go here this Sunday. We went in this church, and it was very strange because it was so packed. You remember that? It was so packed that the, um, the people had chairs outside of the building. And we were like, 
on our earth, this little bitty church in the middle of nowhere. People had chairs outside the building. We went looking for it after this and couldn't find it, by the way. It's kind of strange. But anyway, uh, so he went in this building. The man was preaching a message, and he preached about these two young men who were both born in the same hospital and both gave the same diagnosis. And both of them, the doctor said that they'd never walked. Well, one of the families, they went home and they, you know, made everything walk proof and they, uh, you know, bought the best wheelchair, the best environment for him to never walk. And the other family said, went and bought some shoes, you know, and, and they, you know, they, they went and, uh, you know, bought some leg weights and, you know, and they started preparing for war because they were committed to their son walking. And, uh, and both the young men ended up being in the Olympics. Well, they went back. They went back years later to this hospital to determine if, you know, because it was strange that these boys had the same diagnosis in the same hospital. They went back years later and they looked at this, the records of the hospital and they, to determine if, if this was, you know, if it was an anomaly, you know, what happened to these young men. That's how they found all this out, by the way. One of them became an Olympian. And uh, <clears throat> they went back and they looked at the records. And so they, came, they brought the young men in. They tested everything and, and all this stuff. They, were, they weren't as young. But they tested everything and they determined two things. One, that they were right about the one that made the Olympics. He should have never been able to walk. But the other young man... They were wrong about it. It was a misdiagnosis. And he never walked. But they were wrong about his diagnosis. He did have a diagnosis that should kind of impair his walking, you know. But he didn't have the diagnosis they thought he had of never walking. And I knew I was supposed to hear that message at that timing. And and uh, anyway, years later, uh, Hannah Banana, stand up, Hannah. Hannah is the tallest 10 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> Stand up, Hannah. <laughs> she can walk, she can run. We went to a track, we went to a track when she was three, and I had to make her stop running. She ran that track three, four times. I said, baby, you're too little to be running this track. She ran three quarters of a mile without stopping. I was like, okay, uh, stop, baby. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you something, this mom, this mom of theirs, let me tell you, when she goes to war praying, she has, she has an unlimited endurance for prayer, which I don't possess. I need to possess it. I don't possess it. My wife has unlimited, I mean, I can wake up in the middle of the night, my wife praying. I can wake up at three o'clock in the morning, my wife's praying. I can, wait, I can, I can, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. My wife, my wife has an unlimited endurance when it comes to prayer. I wish I had it. I want it. Maybe you'll teach me one day, <laughs> but I'm thankful she's on my team. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I don't feel like getting into some of the complications. Abigail, y'all know she's been through a lot. Uh, she was a facial impression at, at birth and she's had, she's had a few things. God's delivered, delivered, delivered. One of the key points that all of you know about, uh, the doctor put my wife on a medication. Uh, my wife had some uh, physical problems at one time. The doctor put on medication that caused her to have uh, memory issues. But they didn't, they weren't very clear that she would have memory issues. Um, we found that out after the fact, but, uh, but my wife, and not, not to make any excuses, my wife has never requested an excuse in this regard. But she was on a medication that caused memory problems. And uh, my wife had, a, had a, a doctor's appointment, and she had Abigail in the car in the hottest summer. Uh, Y'all remember that summer? It was the hottest summer at record. And uh, Abigail was in a sweltering car. She fell asleep. Abigail was so quiet, like a little mouse. She fell asleep, and uh, my wife jumped out, and she was kind of late for her appointment. She went to her appointment, and she realized while she was in there, and the baby had been in the car for a cool minute that Abigail was left in that car. And people were dying left and right of heat exhaustion, not even in a car that summer. And, uh, and, and, and God protected my baby. God protected my baby. 
As a result of that, a lot of y'all don't know this part of the story. As a result of that, DeAndre was actually thrown in jail. A lot of y'all, we've never talked about that. Uh, she was thrown in jail, and um, it was a very trying moment in our lives. And um, uh, I had to find a way to conjure up the money to bail her out, which happened pretty quickly, <laughs> thank God. Uh, she was there for, she spent the night, I mean, she was there. She, she didn't, we didn't get her out immediately or anything like that. And, uh, and we had litigation, we had people trying to, to do stuff, take our kids and all types of stuff as a result of that situation of us rushing her to the hospital. And uh, uh, we had a lot of problems come at us from that angle. Now, I want to tell you that my wife, did I tell you my wife's a praying woman? <laughs> so the Lord had already showed DeAndre all this was going to happen. She told me it was going to happen before it happened. So it kind of threw me off when everything started happening because the Lord sent her a very clear word uh, about that. The Lord also sent her a very clear word about uh, that she was uh, pregnant, <laughs> which we didn't know about, with uh, Ian. Um, during this same time, uh, the Lord sent her a clear word that she's, we were about to go through, that she specifically was about to go through a whole lot of stuff. And it happened just as she said, but God was faithful uh, the, the, the case, the case was, it ended up being dropped. I mean, I mean, everything ended up happening the way it was supposed to happen. Um, and these are things that, these are things a little bit embarrassing type embarrassment is brought on in moments like these and things like this. But, but I, I, I think I, I, my wife is just resilient and I mean, she's just resilient, you know, and I, and I can, I can bless you with this testimony because, she tough, like she just kind of tough. When the, like, like, like a lot, lot of, lot of uh, people wouldn't even tell that story. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a form fitting story. It's not a story that makes you look good. It, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, adorn you very well. But, but, it, but it's a story that's true, and God delivered. <laughs> so He needs the glory. Um, it's weird because uh, the Lord gave. DeAndre went, well, I'm not even going to get into the words he's been giving me. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. I'm, I'm not getting on you too much. All right, so <laughs> DeAndre does not like to be put on the spot. So I'm getting in trouble. I'm going to be in the doghouse over this whole situation. But um, I said that, that the thing that makes me think of God's faithfulness is the word Nehemiah. And there's a reason for that. Um, we were told by the doctor that Nehemiah was going to be aborted. Um, DeAndre was having physical problems. She already had this looming uh, fear is the best word to describe this looming fear that something bad might happen with Nehemiah because she was of age. Uh, she, how old were you with Nehemiah? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you ain't going to say the real age. She was 24, but <laughs> switch those numbers. No, I'm just playing. No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm playing with, but uh, she, she, she has had fear in her, in her mind and heart and um, about, about the topic of, of Nehemiah. We didn't have that name at that time. Uh, by the way, the Lord has only named two of my children and uh, Nehemiah is the one that, that, that I'm talking about today. Um, but, but, uh, and the Lord named him at 3 o'clock a.m. as DeAndre was praying, by the way. Uh, but uh, when the doctor said that he would be aborted, that he's not going to make it, don't get attached, don't think he's going to make it, because she was bleeding, and she bled for an entire month with Nehemiah. In her. And by the way, Nehemiah is our largest child. <laughs> He came out nine pounds, 12 ounces. <laughs> um, and I know that that's not, that, that might be unsettling, but sometimes the Lord delivers us from unsettling things. And it, might, it might not, you know, it's not a feel good message or something like that or feel good thing that I, some of the stuff I'm telling you, but I'm telling you the unsettling thing in your life that's uncomfortable, you might not want to talk about it, it's disruptive. God can deliver you from that. 
And, and by the way, he will deliver you in due season. <laughs> um, but but it was just a really uh, amazing moment. I want I want you to come up and, and, and baby and talk about that. I just want you to talk about the main thing. I want you to talk about is how the name of Nehemiah came about because you know better than anybody how that name came about. So if you if you'll come up real quick. And she's holding Nehemiah, by the way. That's that baby boy. I can hold him while you talk. If you'll let me. Go on, your daddy. Yeah. There he is. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is faithful. And I don't I don't like to talk because I get emotional, but yeah. And like he was saying, I, I, um, I, they gave me paperwork, and I have that paperwork in my room right now under my bed that I'm keeping. And they said, he's not going to make it. They said, a spontaneous abortion. And I said, hmm, we'll see. So, <laughs> but I just prayed. And, and like he was saying, I, I'm, not a, I'm not as young as I once was when I first started having kids. So, um, I, you know, have the doctors tell you, you know, once you get past 35, your chance of having a baby with try something 23 or this or that or, you know, Down syndrome or something is one in 200. One in 200 when you're like 35. I was 41. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to listen to the doctors, but. <laughs> you can't, Lord, you're, I'm sorry. Love me, love me, love me. I didn't want to listen to the doctors, but when the doctor tells you something, you know, you have to, and it's not, good news you have to fight against in your mind and i felt like i was in a battle in my mind in my mind and my mom was not right and uh and i just um i don't think anybody around me knew but i was i was in a, such a dark place i was in the darkest place i'd ever been in my life and i felt like um you know at, at some point um when he was about eight months when i was pregnant for about eight months uh the, that the lord sent a word um that you know to fear not Fear not, and uh, and I stood on that word, and that does not mean that the fear did not come back, because when the fear came back, I went back and I prayed, and I said, God, you said fear not, you said fear not, and the next day, when I woke up, and I felt unsettled, and I felt like I was in fear, I prayed, and I said, God, you said fear not. I found myself on my knees about 20 times a day, reminding myself to fear not, to fear not. And I got it so faithful to deliver that word, to deliver that word to bring me peace. That, I mean, I, we serve a great God. We serve a good God who, who delivers and, and prepares our hearts for the things that we go through. And God is faithful, and we serve such a good God. So I continue just to pray. and. Um, I just continued to pray and um, just to do all that I was called to do, you know, homeschool kids. Well, I'm thinking, well, I'm feeling this baby move, you know, and I'm thinking this baby could have Down syndrome. This baby could be sick or something. So, and I, I mean, just all the thoughts of fear, you know, you know, people, you, you're going to be ashamed when this baby comes out. And this baby is born sick, and people are going to say, see, I told y'all you, you should have stopped having kids. You're going to have this sick baby. Be you real. Know? Be real. Keep it real, honey. Keep it real. Keep it real. So I said, I said, Lord, help me. Help me not to be ashamed, God. Help me not to be ashamed. I start preparing my mind, you know, for all the services I would need and this and that. And I said, this is not of God. And it seemed like, it seemed like every time I would drive down the street, the, the kids had a, they were on the basketball team and the, the coach's kid had Down syndrome. So there I am pregnant, dealing with all this. And I said, this is not of God. This is, God's gonna do something. Like, God's gonna do something. This is just, this is just a fear of the enemy. And it seemed like every time I turned around, every time I went to Walmart or something, there was a sick kid. Some, and I, you know, I, I pray now more for people who have, who have children that are sick and stuff like that because I would have loved this baby. I would love this baby if he were sick, um, if he couldn't speak, if he couldn't walk. I would love this baby because he's mine. 
and God gave him to me. And he saw fit to give him to me sick if he was sick. But I said, God, I don't want to be ashamed. You know, I don't want people's mouth on, on what I'm doing. And it, sometimes you just can't stop people's mouth from being on what you're doing. You just have to stand with God and stand with what God is doing. You have to just do what God has called you to do. So, um, so we didn't have a name for him. I wanted to really name him Nathan um, after Jonathan and after John John and after Ian, which all means Jonathan. And I wanted to name him Nathan. But one day when I was praying, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was praying at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I, I just placed my hand on my stomach and I was just praying. I said, God, I want you to give me a word. Give me a, a name for this baby. And this was after, after the Lord had given me the word to fear not. And I was just praying and the Lord said, Nehemiah. <laughs> What's it mean, honey? Nehemiah. So I, I opened the Bible and I said, let me find out what Nehemiah means. It means comforted by God. Comforted by God. God's comfort. Amen. God's comfort. And I did not want to name my baby uh, an African sound, an African American sounding name, uh, just because I don't want my babies, you know, when they on the application or something, for people, somebody to know. Okay, he black. You know? But I said, I said I'm going to name this baby Nehemiah, and I, we did not have a middle name, and I said. This name does not sound good to me. Let me be honest. I said, this name does not sound good to me. But I said, this is God's faithfulness. This is the name that the Lord picked for my baby. This is the name that God handpicked. He chose because of his faithfulness. Because of his faithfulness. So I named my baby Nehemiah. <laughs> and his name is Nehemiah James. Because God is faithful and he delivers and God really just comforted my mind through that whole time. God just really placed his hand on my mind because he knows how low I was. He knows how low I was. I was a one, y'all. I'm telling you. It was a horrible, horrible situation just to go through. And some of the thoughts I only, thank God, God only knows, will only ever know the thoughts that I had. Let me just say that. Only God will ever know. And I'm thankful for his deliverance. I'm thankful for his word that he sent to comfort my heart in the time of need. Because God is faithful. And he does deliver. Amen. Amen. See, here I was thinking you just praying because you love the Lord and you walking in fear. You nah, 20 times a day. <laughs> nah, she, uh, my wife is such a sweetheart. She just, uh, she just, I just love her. She's just such a, <laughs> such a sweetheart. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, no matter what it is, and I know this is a, an Orthodox service, but <laughs> It's what the Lord gave me. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is that you're going through, God is with you. Robin? Emmanuel? <laughs> it's coming back up. It's coming back up. God is faithful. It's not that you're not going to go through stuff. It's that just believe that that same God that gets you through all that other stuff, he probably gonna, he's going to get you through this too. He's going to get you through this. Too. Can we be confident in him? Does he, does he deserve our confidence? What was that song about, Haley? You are more than able. I, I can't do it like she does it. But, <laughs> but then she said, what's that saying? Who am I to what? Deny. What the what? What the Lord can do. Like, like, why are we second guessing God? Stop giving our problem more attention, more praise, more honor than we give our God. Like, he's trying to over them all. Amen. So, uh, you know, every now and then we get a glimpse into what other people have gone through. I know that you have gone through so much stuff. And that's the cool part. That means I know you've seen God deliver. 
so many times. So that same God is present with us today. And I think that if there's somebody here who needs, and we can, we can have music, I don't know how you want to do it, but we're going to call people up who need prayer, who feel like, you know, that they're going through something and they want God to deliver. Um, we're going to ask that you come up to the front. This is part of the altar call today or whatever you want to call it. It's a formal name. But we're going to ask that you come up to the front and, uh, and receive. If you feel like today that, that uh, you're dealing with something and you want God to overthrow whatever you're dealing with, I want you to come up to the front right here. And uh, we'll receive uh, our pastor, Pastor Bobby. Um, Great word, Pastor John. Great word. Amen. So uh, all that want to prayer, come up. I'll see us with a prayer and thanksgiving that your request be made known to God. Um, Sister Smith, uh, you can. I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Harper, Pastor Bob, to join me up here. Uh, after which Pastor Bob will have the last words, coming kind of whatever way God leads him to close us out. I know what the church wants you to do. When, no matter what you say, they want you to also minister in tongue, but that's, I'll just give it to him. And um, I'm going to ask you, uh, Pastor, I don't know whether you want to, um, I, I think we're going to take each request individually and then pray one prayer at the end. Okay. So okay. If, we, if we could do that, uh, come to a pastor, speak your request, and then, um, and then we'll pray one prayer at the end. Okay. If you lead us into it, and then you'll okay. keep the mic and go for uh, Okay. I think we're going to pass you off to we have to pass the minister.